What's up, Rail fans? We're here at what used to be the Jackson Street grade crossing. As you can see, it's not a grade crossing anymore. I'm not sure why, but it's not. If you look closely down there, let's zoom in here. I don't know if you saw what that, okay, you see what that pickup truck just turned, just came out of, and that white car is, is going into? That is now the throughway. And if you look over there, that is Luzerne Street. No, 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 I'm, that's not Luzerne Street, that's a different street. But that's the throughway now. Like I said, I don't know why this is no longer a grade crossing, but it's not. But the reason we're here is because the Reading and Northern will soon be coming and it's got a little anomaly today. Today it has a yard job with him. Now as you know the yard job will typically cut off back at Taylor Yard. Taylor Yard is about a uh, mile, maybe a mile and a half that way. But the yard job will be with the PISB train today. He'll be helping him up at Scranton Junction to do some work. So we're going to get him coming through. And he's got a pretty good train, too. A pretty good-sized train, from what I understand. So, we'll see what happens. And I can sum up what happened in as little as two words. Not much. Spoiler alert, the 30 or so car train that I was expecting to come through turned out to be a pathetic three. Still, all was not lost, and this is where two more anomalies come into play. It's Friday, November 1st, and as you could probably tell from the bare trees, the falling leaves, and the wind, summer 2019 is now long behind us. That means that there will be plenty of cold, dreary, miserable days ahead. What can I say? That's winter in northeastern Pennsylvania, and the older I get, the more I dislike it. The first true sign of winter for me are the low-hanging, foreboding clouds. As you learned at the beginning of this year's summer special, northeastern Pennsylvania, and especially Scranton, has a bad reputation for overcast skies. And speaking of the summer special, I have the final episode cut together. And no, it won't take until December to upload it, but it will take until sometime next week. Making these videos, rendering them, and uploading them is a very, and I do mean very, time-consuming process that's literally a full-time job in itself. In fact, to answer one viewer's question as to how I have time to do it all, it's simple. I'm able to make up my own schedule. A few videos back we got to see the obscure operations of the Reading and Northern's Kaiser Valley branch and its switchback spur track. You learned that the switchback track was switched on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, but you also learned that schedule could be changing. Remember that today is Friday, November 1st, 2019, and it appears that those changes have come to fruition. You also learn that the big and infamous SD50s could sometimes be caught on these trains. Today we're in luck as the 5014 is coupled to the SD40-2 number 3057. The 5014 is the first of nine SD50s on the road, including three standard SD50s, two SD50Ms, and four SD50-2s acquired from CSX last year. One of the SD50-2s is an X B&O, which in turn means that it's an X chassis system. The 5014 is an X Union Pacific and Missouri Pacific, both of the same number. In fact, with the exception of the X CSXers that are numbered from 5018 to 5021, the other five have had the same road number their whole lives. Although this is speculation, I suspect the reason is because they were bought early in Reading and Northern's railroading days and renumbering a locomotive is an expensive process that involves more than just slapping on a new number. Number boards have to be changed and amendments have to be made to numerous mechanical documents and I estimate that renumbering a locomotive today can easily cost multiple thousands of dollars. And as long as we're talking about the 5014, here's a picture of her 15 years ago in 2004 on Penobscot and wearing fresh paint and coupled to the SD40-2 number 3051. Note the variations in their paint schemes, the SD50s versus the SD40-2s. One thing that I didn't show you before was the junction where the switchback spur branches off from the Kaiser Valley track. Here you can see the runaround track and the junction appropriately called Scranton, and judging by that covered hopper sitting there, the power and crew is somewhere close by.
Well, I don't know, rail fans. That wasn't much of a train. I don't know what happened. The radio said he was going to have the yard job with them, so I don't know. But there you go. Train PISB. Friday, November 1st. It's 12.36 p.m. now. We're going to say he came through at 12.33.